Hey, what's up, Eagles Nation? It's your guy, Cool Eagle, back here with another video. I just came to talk with you guys about the keys to victory in beating the New Orleans Saints. Uh, something that seemed like a very daunting task with the numerous amount of offensive struggles we're dealing with right now. Um, I could go in a list for you, but you could just also go watch my previous videos and give it a like and actually leave a comment, man, and you know, like give me your opinion. Um, now, for me, I feel like beating the New Orleans Saints is definitely not going to be easy. I definitely not count on us beating the New Orleans Saints, although I will say this to get it on record. I am in full support of Jalen Hurts right now, and I'm really hoping Doug Peterson actually calls a better game plan than what he did for Carson Wentz, because right now that's exactly what it's looking like, and I'm getting myself emotionally prepared to not cuss at the TV, because if Doug Peterson, and let's just think about it, Aren't y'all going to look at Doug Peterson a totally different way if he actually, you know, is, establishes a better run game than he has been in the past three games, getting Jalen Hurts outside the pocket, something that he has not done for Carson Wentz, uh, and just coaching to this team's strengths instead of being counterintuitive and doing things that are outside of our own offensive personnel. Again, we can go into that, but again, you just go watch previous videos. But right now, we're going into a Saints defense right now that's coming in hot. They're like number four in pass defense and number two in the NFL in run defense. And for the, and for the past few games, they're really looking like a number one defense, man. I'm surprised they're not number one right now. Like, uh, put it in the comments, man, if the Saints are actually number one or something right now. Because I looked on Pro Football Reference, and they said the Saints are right now number four in pass, number two in the run. So... <clears throat> So beating them right now is going to be very hard because you can't pass the ball and then your head coach is not scheming the run properly. So what we have to do right now is exactly what I say. We have to establish the run 25 to 30 times to keep that daunting and horrifying Saints offense with Taysom Hill, Alvin Kamara, and Michael Thomas in that offensive line that protects Taysom Hill very well, uh, who is looking like he can do it all. So right now, we need to keep them off the field. So run the ball, control time of possession, and just play smart football, which is you know something that I can't really bet on us doing right now just because we're just in such turmoil right now. But, that, but that's what we have to do. And that brings me to my next point. Um, after this season, man, and I was just thinking about it and watching uh, ESPN Insiders talk on a 97.3 ESPN, um, and they were saying, man, if anybody is going to get fired right now, it would have to be Doug Peterson. Like, he would have to be that fall guy. And arguably so, uh, just because, um, like, Harry Roseman and his job security, um, he's pretty much the reason golden boy from what a lot of us hear. Um, the Eagles are about to be $80 million over the cap next year. And, you know, that so that gives him another year to fix a lot of these problems and, you know, completely scapegoat all the blame onto Doug and Carson. Um, and then he's already knowledgeable of this team, something that you don't have to waste time and resources on to get the new GM acclimated if that's something that Lurie was going to do, which he's clearly not. Um, and then you have too many guarantees in Carson Wentz's contract. Right now, Carson Wentz is at an NFL record and guarantees at $107.87 million in guarantees. Um he was guaranteed $66 million guaranteed at signing, $34 million cap hit if you cut him next year, uh, which is something, well, yeah, like $34 million cap hit if you were to cut or trade him next year, uh, $31 million 22, uh, 22. But what from what I'm hearing, but from what I'm hearing is, the, uh, is that uh, they can actually trade Carson Wentz um, after that this next year because he's here next year. Um, and we'll just see what happens with that, man. Everybody's talking about the number of teams he can go to. And, you know, that's definitely good for another video. But right now, uh, the Carson Wentz has job security for at least another year. Uh, false narratives about Carson Wentz that are just completely false and something a lot of NFL GMs look at. Uh, Carson Wentz being not the same athlete after 2017, that's really not true. His interceptions didn't increase for the next three years. Uh, he had 100.2 PR in a season that he didn't finish. That was a higher touchdown percentage and higher QBR than Brady and Rodgers in both those years. Uh, 48 touchdowns, 14 interceptions 
in 2018 and 2019 span. And then in, 20, and in, in 2019, in a 12 game stretch, he threw for 20 touchdowns and seven interceptions. So Carson Wentz has job security. So that's two people, Howie and Carson both have job security. And what makes Doug so much of the fall guy is the fact that a lot of ESPN and NFL insiders on 97.3 have all said Doug can survive a 3-4 win season. Now, what's the likelihood of Doug pulling out two more games over these last four stretch of games, which seems like a very daunting schedule because you got the Saints, you got the Cardinals, and you got back-to-back -back division games against opponents that should be easy if you scheme against them correctly, but since you don't, these games are a lot more tasking, okay? And then for a past couple years after that Super Bowl year, like you had Doug Peterson's offenses looking uh, completely stale. Um, in his best year in 2017, uh, he had a top 10 offense, uh, but then flatlined in 2018-2019 to 14th, you know, average to below average. So, um, definitely not look good for Doug for the past couple of years. And then his uh, performance this season doesn't bode well as well. Uh, his lack of creativity and play calling and his body language, uh, there have been multiple reports saying that he wouldn't be too upset if he gets fired. Uh, and then his body language at press conferences, you see him slouching and trying to get one word answers and basically putting his own foot in his mouth. And then, of course, you get to on the field action where he's not coaching to this team's strengths. Carson on rollouts where he's the best. We don't go into that. Number 10 rushing offense, but least amount of attempts in the NFL. We're probably the worst in attempts. Uh, and then he's unwilling to adjust or share play calling duties. Now, I know a lot of y'all are talking about Carson Wentz has also said that he's unwilling to change. But think about it is Carson Wentz's erratic play uh, given in many samples uh, in the Steelers and Ravens game where if Carson Wentz sometimes does not play erratic, it exposes how stale this offensive scheme really is and how much that, you know, like he's the reason why we have three wins right now, okay? Um, and then, yeah, so Doug Peterson, uh, he's unwilling to adjust or share play calling duties. So he's he hasn't been doing a good job in scheming Jalen Hurst into the offense. He hasn't been scheming the runner properly. He's not scheming any of the, uh, any of the receivers wide open. Uh, he's not helping Carson Wentz just relieve those hits he's been taking at a record number more than David Carr did in 2004 when he took 49 hits. Carson Wentz is over that threshold, so it makes sense to, you know, help your quarterback out, and we just have not seen that, okay? And confirmed NFL execs, uh, confirmed NFL execs say Doug is just content and sees nothing wrong which is a very toxic attitude to have on his team right now. And again, there's multiple reports of him being offended with the idea of giving up play calling. So if you look at all these factors right here, like you see why Doug is clearly going to be the fall guy after the season, maybe Jim Schwartz. But uh, but for what, I, for, for what a lot of us wanted, Howie and then Keith Doug, seems like a far off dream. But let me know what you guys think in the comments, man. Like, what are your keys to victory in beating the New Orleans Saints? And do you agree with Doug Peterson being the fall guy?